And this morning, it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker for this morning's celebration. He's none other than our pastor, our beloved Reverend John Scott, who is going to be here to give us another inspiring, awesome message. So please put your hands together and welcome him to the podium. I think I should ask for some music when I'm taking off my mask. <laughs> Good morning, family, worldwide family, and family that's here with me this morning at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. Welcome, welcome, welcome. A joy to just open my heart and to just see you all shining and to imagine those of you at home watching us on this love stream, just beaming love from your heart center to ours and from ours to yours. You know, when I first attended the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, it was 1981, so this past July was also my 39th anniversary along with the temples. I was fascinated and bewildered by the way people in the church spoke. I mean, who talks about I am knowing? You know, so I, the person that invited me, you know, we would, I would go back after church and say, what a peculiar way to speak. You know, um, the prayers particularly just, just were beautiful to my ear, and I got most of it, but the language was really quite strange. You know, you know, you know like when you did a little French or Spanish at school, and when you hear people speaking the language fluently, you can almost catch what it's saying, but not quite. That's how I felt when I first started coming here to the temple. The method of praying really was amazing to me. And I said to the friend that invited me, I don't know if I would ever learn to pray like that. I thought it was quite beautiful, but it, you know, it looked, I felt the same way as I do when I hear Angela Elliott playing the piano or Valerie Chuck. I just think, wow, you know, that must take years and years and years of practice and I'll never get there. And my friend that brought me said, don't worry about it, John. It's like everything else. When you get used to it, it's as simple as ABC. So I've titled my encouragement this morning as simple as ABC. And if this is your first introduction to the science of mind this morning, or you have been a long time truth student over the years as I have, I am hoping that today's talk, in fact, I'm not hoping, as, as they first said when I first came here, I am knowing that today's talk will be a blessing and an upliftment and an inspiration to you. And speaking of ABCs, reminds me of a charming anecdote about an elderly gentleman who passed his granddaughter's bedroom one, one night and, and heard the most peculiar thing happening. She was reciting the alphabet. A... B, C, D, and so on. But she was on her knees by the bedside. And so he said, darling, what on earth are you up to? And she said, I'm saying my prayers. In that tone of voice that children use when they understand it all and we adults just don't get it, do we? He said, um, oh, that's lovely. You mean you're saying your prayers by telling God the alphabet? She said, yes, yes, you see, there's a lot, I, a lot I want to tell God about, but I can't find the words, so I'm just giving him the alphabet and he'll put them together. He knows what I'm thinking. Little Polly was, of course, stating a profound truth, wasn't she? There is a presence and power, my friends, within us, which is always conscious of our thoughts and feelings. Even if we ourselves are not too sure what's happening inside. This presence and power responds to us with absolute fidelity to our, to our inner disposition. Not so much to the words that we spout, but to how we're feeling deeply on the inside. Ernest Holmes, who gave the world this great teaching known as science of mind, and originated the technique of spiritual mind treatment or scientific prayer or affirmative prayer, as we call it, writes in the Science of Mind textbook, and I quote, no man can demonstrate peace 
and cling to unhappiness. No man can jump into the water and remain dry. No person whose entire time is spent in contemplation of limitation can demonstrate freedom from such limitation. End of that quote. What this is saying then, my friends, is that I have to work on myself and you have to work on yourself, not on God. You don't have to work on God. God is ready, willing, and able to give us everything that we desire, but we have to expand our consciousness in order to receive our good. If yours, my friends, is an alphabet of woes with you for unworthy or uncertain, V for vexed, and W for weak, you're going to pray from that consciousness of negativity, and the infinite mind will respond by corresponding to what you are feeling and to the mantra that your heart is saying constantly. The law, which is the way God works, always answers our prayers in a way that corresponds to our consciousness. And what is our consciousness? It is the sum total of our beliefs. One of my favorite New Thought authors, Joel Goldsmith, invites readers of his book, The Art of Spiritual Healing, to, and I quote, just imagine for a moment that you are experiencing an unpleasant night dream. You are in the ocean swimming. You have gone out too far. You look back towards the shore and see that there is very little hope of rescue. And even though you, you shout your lungs out, no one can hear you, and you are seized with fear. You struggle and strive to reach the shore, and of course, the harder you fight, the harder the ocean fights you. There is only one thing left for you to do. Drown. Yes, drown. But wait. In your fight, you shouted, and someone heard you came over and shook you and woke you up. And behold the miracle. The drowning self disappeared. The ocean disappeared. The struggle disappeared. You awakened and found that you had never left your comfortable home. All that was necessary in order to be released from the struggle was to awaken. End of that quote. And so you see, friends, we may be experiencing something at the human level of form, but all we need to do is wake up. Wake up to the truth beyond the form, the truth of that infinite perfection that resides within each and every one of us. In our teaching, we use the technique of affirmative prayer to convince ourselves of the truth beyond our human circumstances and our human experiences. As my friend said when I first visited the Temple of Light, it really is as simple as A, B, C. In his book, The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle explains the difference between your life, and I want you to listen to this very carefully, there's a difference between your life and your life situation. There's your life. It's perfect. It's untouched by any outward circumstances. It was created by the author and finisher of all that is good, all that is beautiful, all that is holy, all that is joyful, all that is perfect. So your life in essence, is perfect and knows nothing of the vicissitudes of pandemics and world finances and wars and rumors of wars. Life itself is as God created it. But your life situation is a whole different kettle of fish. 
So I want you to listen carefully because if you know, if you get this, you will have grasped the ABC of affirmative prayer. Tolle says that your life is that universal energy, that place of infinite potential, being, consciousness, and love. Your life situation, on the other hand, is anything that you experience in the human realm of form. It is your experiences, your circumstances, your physical body, your perceptions. So learn this today, my friends. Your life never needs to be healed. Your life never ever needs to be healed. Just remember that. The only thing that needs healing is what? Your life situation. Put another way then, there is an essence of you that is whole, perfect, complete, abundant, prosperous, and joyous. Yes, there are also experiences in your life at the human level. A medical diagnosis and the prescribed treatment. A damaged or broken relationship. A cash flow challenge. And so on. But friends, there is an essence beyond your life experience. A perfect life. A perfect existence beyond your apparently imperfect life situation. The A of affirmative prayer is therefore to affirm. Affirm your perfection. Recognize and know the essence beyond your life experience. The A is therefore affirmation. The B of affirmative prayer is to believe. Believe in that blueprint of original perfection that is the truth of your being and that can never be solid or spoilt or sick or disheartened or depressed. Believe that at the very center of your being is something so awesome, so beautiful, so joyous, and so complete that if you could just hold on to that belief, my friends, hold it close to your heart and affirm it and make that belief strong in your consciousness, your life situation will adjust to align itself with what you believe. And the C of affirmative prayer is to claim your good. Claim your good. It's yours by divine right of being. Claim it. A, affirm it. B, believe it. C, claim your good. Author Neil Donald Walsh, in his book, God's Message to the World, writes, and I quote, your energy has the power of a magnet. You see, that's the law of attraction. Walsh says, your energy has the power of a magnet. Remember that even feeling, and then he says, actually, especially feeling, is energy. And in the matter of energy, like attracts like. The idea, then, is to step into the application of the power of God, not a supplication to God that the power be used. God's invitation is to utilize the confirmative power of prayer, and this shift from supplication to application can be miraculous. End of that quote from, from Walsh. When you understand, therefore, the distinction between the purity, wholeness, and invincibility of your God, given life, and that life as different from the challenges of your life situation, you begin to understand that in the spiritual sense, there is nothing really, nothing, that needs healing. As we say in this teaching, 
there is only perfection to be revealed. Nothing to be healed, only the original perfection to be revealed. And, you know, I often think about that business of the blueprint. I think, you know, well, I live in a very nice townhouse. I'm very happy with it. There is a blueprint of that home from before it was even, it even began to be built. And it's lovely. But over the years, I have wanted to add a bathroom or change the tiles or up-level it in some way. Enclose the balcony and, and make it into another sitting room. There was nothing wrong with the original blueprint. If I want to add to it, that's my choice. But it doesn't mean that the original was imperfect. And that's the truth about our lives. Well, of course, we want improvements and we want to, to, to extend our reach and our, our capabilities and our tap into our potential. But the blueprint, the original blueprint created by the Almighty is perfect, whole, and complete, just as it is. Most of us, you know, grew up believing that prayer was a way of petitioning God, didn't we? When we begged and beseeched, we often wound up asking, well, why doesn't God answer my prayers? Maybe we should have tried what little Polly did and just say the alphabet and let, allow God to put our feelings and our thoughts together. Although, perhaps when that happens sometimes, the feelings and thoughts are not so pure. We're thinking about who did me what and who, who can't I, for, I, I can't possibly forgive them for doing this. You don't know what they did me. And maybe that's what, not maybe, for sure, that is what the universe responds to. So let us be very careful about what we have in our consciousness what we have within us. You know, I never forget the prophet Elisha saying to the widow who had nothing and who was, who was um, in danger of losing her sons into, into slavery because her father had left, her husband had died and left her in debt. And Elisha said to the widow, what have you in the house? You remember that story? What have you in your house? And my friends, when you read about houses and buildings in the scriptures, houses are a metaphor for consciousness. What is in your consciousness? And what did she say? I have only a little oil. You see, sometimes we go to God with prayer, you know, and we affirm and we believe. But when it comes to the sea and the claiming, we claim that we only have a little. You know, one of the big lessons for me was Jesus holding those loaves and fishes and looking out at the multitude. And the story goes that he looked up to heaven. Again, when you look up to heaven, it means looking up to your higher consciousness and gave thanks for the little that was in his hands. How often do we look at what we have and instead of saying, it's just a little, I have only a measure of this, we look up to the consciousness of our being, to the source of our very life, the author of the blueprint that's at the center of our being, and say, God, I'm so grateful for this. In fact, out of this, I'm going to give my friend something. I want to share what I have. And so, you know, friends, Jesus said, when you do this, when you believe, act as if it is the truth, because it is. So when you pray, act as if. Claim your good from the consciousness of the all-inclusiveness, the abundance, the love, the joy, the prosperity and the radiant health that is on the blueprint of your life. Turn away from your life situation for a moment and just give thanks for what you have. You know, quantum physics is now confirming what the mystics throughout the ages have always known. And they go on like they're just, they, they have just found it. But trust me, if you go back into the, the ages into ancient, ancient philosophy. 
the mystics have always known and always claimed that the outer world is a reflection. It is simply a reflection of what we see. The outer world of our life situation is really a reflection, my friends, of what we are seeing. In other words, if we see abundance, we experience abundance. If we see health, we experience health. The universe, and this just blows my mind, actually bends its malleable. It actually bends and shapes and shifts itself to reflect back to us what we are seeing. So we need to teach ourselves to see as God sees. And God never sees just a little. God sees the abundance that it created in all its beauty and all its magnificence and all its allness. So the purpose of affirmative prayer is therefore to condition our minds to see life as God sees it. Perfect, whole, beautiful, and everlasting. Rather than to see our human vision, which invariably sees limitation and pain in our life situation. And my friends, if you don't know how to, to use affirmative prayer, find a Science of Mind class near you or go online and join a Science of Mind class and learn this, this technique, this art, this, this beautiful format for praying, affirmative prayer. And yes, in the early days of, of learning, you have to practice. I think of Angela Elliott. Uh, on the piano, and she must have practiced for hours and hours and hours. But no, it comes to her as easy as A, B, C. So this is where a lot of people, you know, have difficulty. During challenging times or times of sorrow and pain, it may be hard to see as God sees. It's hard to see through that migraine headache to the, the radiant health that is the truth of your being. I know that. It is hard to see with your God-given vision when the life situation is showing you less than what you want. We may get so wrapped up in the frustration of our life situation that we cannot see the other side. And at those times, in addition to knowing how to use affirmative prayer, find yourself a practitioner of the science of mind and get some help. Because sometimes when you are lying face down in the mud, it's hard to remember that above you is a blue sky. But if you seek the assistance of a practitioner for prayer support, that person can know for you what you may be finding it difficult to know for yourself. Reverend Carroll, a, coll a colleague science of my, uh, uh, Center for Spiritual Living minister, uh, once sent out an ancient prayer attributed to the 5th century patron saint of Ireland, St. Patrick. And that prayer shows the simple power of a daily affirmative statement to organize our perception of our life situation, to help us to see as God sees. The prayer has come to be known as St. Patrick's breastplate. I love that. The breastplate of righteousness the Bible talks about. So this prayer by St. Patrick is known as his breastplate, and it begins like this, I quote, I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's eye to look before me, God's word to speak for me. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's eye to look before me, God's work, word to speak for me. Now, my friends, these are powerful affirmative words. Reverend Carroll asks, how would you like to arise every morning? What would you call to you each day as you're getting out of bed? 
how does I arise with the glory of divine life in me? Does that feel right to you? I are, you're getting out of bed and you say, oh, I arise with the glory of divine life in me today. Wow. That's it. Today I arise with the glory of divine life in me. Today I arise with the glory of divine life in me. What about I arise with my purpose clear before me today or I arise in the knowledge of who I am. Perfect God, perfect person, perfect being. Or I arise in the power of my spiritual magnificence to bless my world. I like that. Say that one with me. I arise in the power of my spiritual magnificence to do what? To bless the world. I'm not convinced on the sound very fenke fenke to me. Let us say it again. I arise in the power of my spiritual magnificence to do what? To bless the world. So my friends, what would your breastplate say to move you into your day with joy and divine power, Reverend Carroll asks. And friends, that brings me to your assignment. Regulars at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living know that when I give an encouragement, I also leave an, an assignment with those who have blessed me with the, the consciousness of their deep listening. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it, my loved ones. Your mission is to ponder the greatest statements that could guide your day and then create your own breastplate and speak it into each morning as you awaken. Create a breastplate, an affirmation with which you wish to arise. And then post it on Facebook first so that I can send them to Reverend Michael or Reverend Michael can take them off and use them for our daily inspirational um, quote that we send out every day. Joel Goldsmith said, and I quote, the correction of the beliefs that we are ever separate or apart from our good is the essence of true prayer, unquote. Whatever it is that you have believed to be separate from you is in fact a constituted part of your very being. End of that quote. So please say with me, that which I am seeking, I am. That which I am seeking, I am. I include, embody, and embrace within myself, within my consciousness, the reality of God, which forms the infinity of health, wealth, and the harmony of my being. So I break it down. I include, embody, and embrace within myself. I include, embody, and embrace within myself, within my consciousness. Within my consciousness. The reality of God, which forms the infinity of health. The reality of God, which forms the infinity of health. Wealth and the harmony of my being. Wealth and the harmony of my being. Friends, it's really as simple as A, B, C. Affirm your divinity, believe in your divine birthright, and claim your good. Not tomorrow. No, today. It is yours. I believe that as a spiritual community, we are positively impacting the consciousness of Jamaica and the wider world. More and more people are saying things like, I've been listening to you, to your love stream. I hear such positive things about what you people are saying. I don't know what that, that they're necessarily hearing verbatim reports of what we teach here, but what I believe people are hearing, in inverted commas, is who we are being. And we are being a center of love, a center of light, a distributing center of the truths of life which liberate all people with whom we come into contact and who come into contact with our teaching. A person just said to me, not it's so funny, I, I called her somebody who hasn't been here for quite some time, and I said, this is a voice from your history. And the person said, no, it's not. It's a voice from my present. I just finished listening to your encouragement on YouTube. You see, we are reaching out and I want us to make our, our every moment 
of our life situation, one in which we live the teaching, which is the science of mind. And so the breastplate that I have chosen to work with for this week is, and I quote, I arise in the heart-filling love of my spiritual family, that, that are Ono. I arise in the heart-filling love of my spiritual family, and I am fed. That is my grace before my meals. That is my mantra when I wake up in the mornings this week. Would you say with me, today I arise in the heart-filling love of my spiritual family, and I am spiritually fed. Together. Today I arise in the heart-filling love of my spiritual family, and I am spiritually fed. Today, my friends, I offer the chalice of my love to all whom I meet. Today I affirm I believe and I claim my divinity. I affirm, I believe, and I claim my divinity. It really is as simple as A, B, C. Namaste.